Welcome to your Joyful Riches podcast, where you gain precious tips and tools for creating your wonderful, joyful, thriving life, because we all want and deserve to be happy, healthy, and wealthy. And this podcast is delivered with the Global Net Networking USA and alongside with Anchor FM, this amazing podcast made easy platform. And for this week, we are so thrilled and honored to have Amanda with her, Amanda Hart with us. Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you care mm -hmm. to share with our audience what is it that you do? Um, I'm an intuitive consultant and I help people to overcome adversities and challenges through the subconscious mind. Wow, that is amazing. And, and I, I can imagine how, how well you help people with that. What brings you to become an intuitive consultant? Did you kind of grow up and say, yeah, you know, I want to be this intuitive consultant or it's actually came to you somehow? Yeah, no, uh, I was destined to be an interior designer, but um, through uh, a childhood that was challenging and then recognizing that I was attracting a lot of what I thought was bad luck um, through my early adulthood, I decided to take it upon myself to try to find um, answers and, and a way of healing that. Um, I tried orthodox means. I tried a lot of um, modalities um, which didn't really um, uh, help me to understand. So I dived into the spiritual uh, mind, body, spirit world, which resonated very much with me because I had been a very intuitive child. And through the process of healing and welling myself, I then I didn't actually mean to go into this work. It was just that I was a um, a young mum. I had young children, and I was attracting a lot of mums who were saying to me. You know, you're changing. What are you doing? Can you help me? And and really, that's how it started. You know, nearly nearly thirty years ago. Wow, that that is amazing. <laughs> Particularly when you say nearly thirty years ago, because you look like you are about thirty. So I think you start when you were out. <laughs> you were five. So oh, I'm, I'm fifty six, and I've yeah, I've lived quite a challenging life. So, um, but I, but I feel that it's the energy I, you know, it's the spirit, it's the mind, which keeps you young. That is very true. When you are young at heart, you'll, you'll stay young inside out. So to say that is so beautiful. Yeah. That is very true. And, mm -hmm. and you mentioned about you, you, you were young mom, you were helping out a lot of young mom here, the United States will be observing mother day. And so would you care to share with, with us in general, but also for all the mother who, who listens to this or who knows a mother, what are some of the, the, the tips and tools perhaps to be able to, 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 to succeed uh, in whichever way, whether it's to succeed is to, to be a stay-at-home mom or to succeed in creating a business or something? Yeah, I, so this is this is quite an interesting question. And um, I believe we all have what we call a blueprint. It's like our instruction manual of how we come into this world and live a good life. Um, when we're out of alignment and we can be out of alignment, especially when we have a young family and we are stretched, we're overwhelmed, we're challenged. Sometimes we end up, you know, having to raise our children um, as a single parent. Um, and it it it. What we try to do is uh, get ahead of the challenges. Um, what we're doing is, is, is in that sense, we're counterproductive because all we're trying to do is, is fight it. Um, working more intuitively helps us to find out what it is that's that's on our blueprint. You know, what are we meant to, to serve? How do how do we actually live a good life? And also. It helps us with our challenges and opportunities. So it helps us with the answers, to whether we should be stay, a stay at home mom or whether we should be going to work um, early. We, it's, it helps us with everything that we need to live a good life. And I feel 
that is the the way we can succeed by by raising children and doing the things that we really want to do. Uh, so kind of listening to to really your well, I guess like you say to your blueprint, what is it that really yeah. is calling you instead of saying, Hey, you know what? It's uh, everybody else in the society saying this, or or perhaps the in law saying that, and 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 so forth. Mm -hmm. So how do how do people connect with with their blueprint? Is is yeah. there something that that aside from consulting you, which are, that 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 alone just amazing to me, and I think everybody should should uh, connect to um uh, to Amanda. Will be uh it'll be shown at the part uh, at the at the descriptions of the interview how to connect with Amanda. But uh, is that is there a way that kind of like give people a hint on how how do they know which direction to go on on and and so forth. Yeah, I've just written an article for um, a, a US magazine um, and, and I've simplified it because I think that really as a mother, we've got so much going on. Life is so busy as it is. We need a very simple formula. And I have a formula that I use and I encourage people to use. First of all, we need to have healthy habits. So to find our blueprint, it's like trying to if we're, if we're in the middle of overwhelm, by trying to find something that that's the jewel inside us, it's very difficult if we're still continuing to do the same as we're doing, which is causing the overwhelm in the first place. So the first thing you do is you start to create structure and the structure should be healthy habits, whether that's eating healthily, sleeping well, um, doing meditation, uh, exercising, walking in nature. You know, the healthy habits that relate to you. It doesn't matter what your aunt does or your your mother does or your neighbors do or your best friend. It's what feels right for you. Healthy habits are what makes your heart sing. And you should be doing this on a daily basis. You would you'd eat and breathe every day. So why not have healthy practices every day? So healthy practices are the seeds that we sow. Um, then we need to develop intuition because our intuitive uh, faculty, which is our our um, our seeing, our hearing and feeling is our, uh, our real friend. It's our best friend that's guiding us. And it's it's our um, navigation system. It's also our communication system to what I call consciousness or the energy world or whatever you believe that has all solutions, all probabilities that are open for us to lead a good, a good life. So developing intuition, you might get drawn to uh, read spiritual books, go to workshops, um, enhance meditation, um, go to, to um, you know, any, anything that's a mind, body, spirit fair, see who you're drawn to, find a coach, anybody or anything that you feel will help you to develop your intuition. And that, ha again, has to feel right. It's about discernment, finding what feels right in your heart, not what's out there, which is the latest trend on Instagram. It's what feels right in your heart. So those two, if you work on those two principles, those start to build foundations and then start to get the telecommunication system in, in, into, into what we call tune up. But what we have to do is also apply the, the faith. We have to develop faith as well, because while that happens, well, as we set those structures and we develop our intuition, we will be challenged because our old negative conditioning, our old programs, our old habits and behaviors will want to slip back to the easy route, which is challenging. So having faith and knowing that despite what's going on externally for us, despite the challenges we're having, as long as we're turning up and doing our healthy practices and we're developing our intuition, it will uh, uh, end up with our, what we call our why or our purpose. And that is the answers that we need or understanding what our purpose is, you know, what we're meant to serve, what, what is our vocation, what, you know, whether that's a, a you know, a good mum to stay at home until the children are a certain age before then branching out into something creative or setting up a small business, you know, a, a alongside the family, whatever it is, your why will start to emerge. And that's how you discover your blueprint. 
I love that. I love how how, how you describe it. it. It sounds very very straightforward, which is always a good thing. And <laughs> I I have I have two questions come from that. But the the first one is you 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 mentioned you know what it what feels good to you and what what feels good to the person. And I know a lot of us, and particularly moms, because moms have this, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, it has to all be about the kid and, 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 and so forth, about the family and, and prioritize them. What are some of your suggestions such that we don't, for, for moms and, and even for many other people, so we don't feel guilty mm. prioritizing us? Yes. And that's, that takes, that is practice. Again, that is, um, once we develop our healthy practices, we're investing in ourselves. Um, I, I always describe uh, mums like the, the May pole and, and the pole, and then you've got all the kids and the family all dancing around with the ribbons. And if you are not stable, how can everybody dance around you? You're, you know, you're the captain of your ship. So if you're not investing in yourself, how on earth can you help support all those people that are, are in your energy field? So the most important thing, rather than feeling the guilt and the shame, it should be a priority and a responsibility for ourselves to be the best we can possibly be so that we have a greater impact on the people around us. And that's how you build healthy communities anyway. Um, so that, and, and there is this, this stigma, unfortunately guilt is the lowest human emotion that we can experience. And it does hold us in concrete boots, which stops us from taking any action whatsoever. So by naturally investing in yourself, i.e. doing your, your, your healthy practices and developing your intuition, automatically that shame and that guilt will dissipate because you're feeding the blueprint and you're no longer feeding what we call the negative conditioning. And all that is, is a negative condition. It's not part of our blueprint. It's not our authentic nature. It is not the essence of who we are. So if you stop feeding it because you're feeding the blueprint, it all automatically dissipates. Oh wow, that is that is so beautiful. I love how you say that the analogy, the analogy of you the, for for moms in particular, when we start feeling guilty about listening to our heart and taking care of ourselves, to remember that you are the the pole, like you say it, and and your children are supposed to be there and around, then surround you. And if you're not solid, if you are shaky because you try to extend and 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 not grounded enough, that that could definitely make it make the the whole thing come down instead of um, going well. Absolutely, and I always say that that children never remember how tidy our house was; they just remember how happy our mom was, and the fun that we had. You know, that's the thing. We have to try to get into our childlike self. So that's another thing I would say. Remember the inner child. Remember what you wanted as a child and how what what lit, lit up your world. You know, the joy. And it is about being more playful and remembering that actually we still have that inner child in ourselves to nurture. So that's how we can reconnect with our children. That is Awesome. That is very true. The children, <laughs> they know, no kids care about if the, the pillow is matching or something like that. And you're like, what? They wouldn't remember that. It's, exactly. a, it's a, On the other hand, as mommy said, we would definitely remember that. And actually make the children a lot of, uh, being a grief specialist, it, it's a lot of time. It was a lot of people come to me with, with, with when it's childhood trauma, it's like, oh, you know, mom's mom said or mom this or that, and then it's they feel guilty, and then like you said, it's the low, the lowest emotion that blocks everybody, and and it's manifest in all sort of physical illness and everything else is mm -hmm. from there, which is uh, very very true. And and you mentioned about structure, about you know allowing allowing you to, to develop healthy habit and structure now. For some people say, 
yeah, well, I could barely catch a breath, never mind healthy habit or or having uh, create a structure around me running around chasing after three kids or something like that. Do you have any recommendations on in particular moms with young yeah. children? Yes, because yeah, and 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 I know this. I mean, I remember I used to to as a as a young mum, uh, and I wrote uh, raised my children on my own, and I was working full time and trying to do the homework and trying to cook and answering calls, and I remember how manic it was. So, you know, if I could tell my younger self, you know, what I know today, because it's you know my work has evolved, I would be much wiser and much much happier uh, and and less you know run ragged um but it's 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 simple um things that we can slip into our day and what i created was what i call bookends bookends are something that you can do first thing in the morning that sets a precedent for your day and something very last thing at night before you go to sleep so you set a precedent for your night sleep now in those two uh, two arenas um, we're actually on our own in our bed, hopefully, you know, that the children are asleep. And so we have that privacy, that time for ourselves, And that's the time where it's optimum for us because we're in what we call the alpha state. And the alpha state is when both hemispheres of the brain are, are you know, that they're, they're, co- uh, they're talking, communicating with one another, and we're open to consciousness. When we're left-brained, when we're just um, in, in manic mode during the day, very stressed we're in beta and beta is the is the part of the brain that's not connected to, to our higher nature to consciousness when we are relaxed at night that's the optimum time or first thing in the morning to actually do our practices because what we're doing is communicating with the energy world and we're setting our precedent what we deserve or what we desire so last thing at night i would say thoughts of gratitude. I would think about all the wonderful things that actually happened to you that day. Even if it was having two minutes to yourself, having a cup of tea or managing to to stand outside in the garden and and look at the beautiful sunshine or something wonderful that your child said to you today or the fact that actually you did really well, you know, showing up and being a really good mum that day and you managed to get through your, your challenging day. So, Gratitude it put it puts you in the present tense, which amplifies your message to, to consciousness that you deserve and you are happy. Um, it also makes sure that as you go to sleep, you are um, having a, a, it's the last thing that you're thinking of. So it stops all the negative thoughts washing into your night sleep sleep so that you can have a good night's sleep. And it's positive. It's Think being feelings of blessed, being blessed in the morning. First thing, it's thinking about your core values. Your core values are, you know, you what might want to be a really good mum. You know, love might mean everything to you. Um, you you might want to be, um, uh, you know, have loving kindness. You might want to live your purpose. You might want to, uh, you know, be, be be a you know better communicator. Whatever it is, whatever your values are. Think about seeing yourself going through your day, utilizing those core values. And it's a short visualization technique. And so you keep your eyes closed as you wake up. Think about your day. The kids are perfect for you. You get to school. You do the school run okay. You know, you have lovely conversations with the mums. You come home. You have time for yourself. You manage to do whatever you've got to do. You make those calls. You you know, whatever it is, that sets a precedent for the day. And that's what we call your healthy practices. These are structures. They take one minute at both ends of the day and they both set a precedent so that you sleep well and your day starts to change. That takes time, though. Over the course of the a few weeks, your mind is now uh, tuning into and feeding the blueprint so that you will find your day will flow better. You will have better relationships. You will start to see results. And that takes time. So it, it takes about 30 days for, the, for for a new habit to form. But if you set that simple structure in place, you will start to see results. But the faith has to come in despite things happening still and challenging you. Have faith that it will change. 
Wow, Dai, I love that book ends. What a brilliant idea. And it's uh, like a, a couple minute here, a minute here and a minute there. Mm -hmm. And it's because sometimes, many times when we think about, we have to do things, we're like, oh, it's going to take an hour. You know, we got to sit and meditate for an <laughs> hour every day. It's like, we don't have time. Who does, right? And mm -hmm. so so it's I, I love how, how it's uh, so brilliant. And I would say, knowing so many people come and, and even just listening among friends, many people say, so, you know, I have a hard time falling asleep or a hard time staying asleep because the mind goes nonstop. Mm -hmm. That gratitude practice, something I have a lot of with my client too at certain stage, it's like that alone will calm your mind down and allow people to be able to sleep. That is so yes. beautiful. I love that. And and the I imagine it's probably to be able to have, if if one's able to, to have a structure of support, wouldn't you say, like a community or something? That yes, can go to. Yeah, most importantly, I I encourage women to be in uh, get into group dynamics or just just you know put out their feelers. You know who who are my people? Um, we we tend to once we start putting our structures in place anyway, and we start uh, developing our intuition, we start to attract our people, that our tribe, our spiritual family it's the people that are there to serve and support us to make us um, help us go through our change our process our transformation so yes being with other women that can you know engage with them give them tips give them help uh, make them feel that, that it's perfectly normal to you know not to be okay and and that's the, the the thing about being a woman we're constantly striving to be okay because we don't want our kids to go through what we go through and it, it's unfortunately it's a it's a real turmoil that we go through but being with other women in groups in support um of of our our process can help with a, a huge transformation for many women. And, and talking about group, you, I actually met you in your group, being, yes, being part of, of your your Facebook group. Would yes. you would would is that something would you uh, you care to share about with with our audience? Yes, yes. Well, this is it was actually developed because I was running a newsletter um, sharing. Um, you know, and showcasing a lot of wonderful women across the world that were doing all sorts of great things to help other women. Um, and it was it was wonderful for a time, but very time consuming. So I decided to set up a face group, uh, uh, book group so that these women could all showcase each other. And it was, you know, it was very organic at start. I just let it happen. But it's actually developed into this huge global group of women across the world who are all that some of them are collaborating, some of them are helping support other women. It's a place where people can just go and ask for, for, for any tips. You know, I'd love to travel. I don't know where to go. There's lots of travel consultants in there. There's people who are just stay at home mums. There are people who are doing yoga. There are people who run retreats or they, they run financial consultancies, whatever it is. It's just a group where people just don't feel that they're being bombarded with um, you know, marketing, it's just where women can be women and be supported by other women and get get advice. And women love to give advice because they know how hard it is to be a woman. Oh, that is so beautiful. It is a beautiful group. And, and so, yeah, if you say, you know what, I feel so alone in, in this world, how trotting along and, and it feels like it's impossible to start anywhere to create structure or even create the book and there are there it, it, it's a large group with wonderful people where you will meet people who you would love to connect the most would you care to share how people connect with you if they love to to learn more from you to have to have you help them uh, as an intuitive consultant or or how do they find this group yeah, so you can go on to Facebook and just uh, look for Empowering Women HQ um, and, you know, ask to join. It's it's great. As I say, uh, it, I, I will introduce you and then you just post what, you know, who you are, 
what you're there for, you know, if you want to reach out for it to, to anyone. It's a great platform. You know, people I've have made friends across the world um, who are, you know, continue to support one another. It's it's a fantastic platform. Um, and then I have my website, which is Amanda hyphen heart.co.uk that's h-a-r-t so people can find me through my website or they can find me on instagram or facebook so yeah any 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 means there oh thank you thank you so much and as we complete our time together which is, seems to be flying so fast here because you are you you have so plenty of amazing tips and tools do you have a final message for our audience yeah, I, I would really say, I think this, I thought about this beforehand because I feel that it's really important to leave something with, with people. Um, whenever we go through adversity, and, and believe me, I've been through a, a lot of adversity through my life, and that's what I help people to overcome. You have to remember that despite what's going on for you, if it's going on for you, there is a solution at some level, and the way to find it is is going within. Because as a human uh, going through, a, a, you know, this expansive experience of, of developing as a human being, um, we, we are spiritual first and foremost, and therefore we only attract that which we need to learn from to, to grow more. So when you are going through difficulty and it, you know, and, and we become overwhelmed, just stop say to yourself what's going on for me right now and what am I going to do about it and we it starts to anchor us because then we can go within to find the answers of how to get through I love that that is so beautiful and and very true as well in my experience there were times and I, I think to a degree it's human nature to something happened you just kind of like run out there and trying to like you know do 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 whatever else and and sometimes point fingers to uh, to others or or <laughs> run all all sort of different things well when you start to look within and and say what is in this for me or for me and for the greater good of all you you'll find you'll find the answer and that is so beautiful Thank you so much, Amanda. That is so plenty of precious, precious tips, whether whether definitely for moms as well as for all of us. Thank you so much. That is so, so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today. And for our audience, thank you for, Barta, for joining us today. Please share these conversations with your friends and families because we all want to be uh, to to and deserve to thrive. And please share one or two gold nuggets in the comments below so we can continue learning from each other. And I thank you very much for joining us. This is Dr. Burjit Tan, your grief specialist for individuals and businesses the United States Country Chair for G100 Global Networking and founder of the International Childhood Cancer Charity. I thank you very much. I look forward to see you again very, very soon. Thank you.